In this series, I'll be spending 72 hours with Africa's last monkey-eating tribe. This is a piece he's given me. I have no idea what part this is, and actually, I kind of like it that way. Can I? Yeah? But first, let me back up. I came to Tanzania to learn about the day-to-day -day lives of some of their over 100 unique tribes. You can sniff tobacco? What is going on here? But no tribe here is quite like the Hidzabe. This is Africa's only remaining hunter-gatherer society, living now the way they lived thousands of years ago. Right now, I'm headed far from civilization, deep into the countryside to make first contact. Here we've driven out pretty much to the middle of nowhere. We're gonna leave our vehicles here and here, and then we're gonna pack up all our stuff and put it on some donkeys. Where we're going, there are no roads. My mission over the next three days is to document everything. These are the arrows these guys are making every day. They use their mouth to kind of adjust it and do everything they do. I'm probably bending it. Hunt when they hunt. <laughs> and eat when they eat. As far as dessert goes out here in the wild, you're not gonna get much more than this. I wanna see what one of the world's most ancient cultures can teach us all about life. Right now we're walking to the Hidzabe camp. I have no idea how far that is. We're gonna find out soon. From the beginning of their time, dating back thousands of years, the Hidzabe have been living in the Lake Ayasi Basin of Northern Tanzania. Yet their first contact with the modern world occurred only 50 years ago. How do you say hello? Anabawa. Anabawa. I'm gonna have to work on that. I'm welcomed by a group of Hadzabe hunters just steps away from their camp. Right now, they're preparing for lunch, which means this morning they've already been out hunting. Lucky for them, the hunt was a huge success. Oh my god. Record, record. Jesus Christ. We've just walked into camp and this is what they're presenting right now. This animal will serve as their protein for today. Monkey. 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 Oh, what is that? Is that an arrow? An agile, quick, tree-dwelling creature shot with a homemade arrow by hand using techniques that go back centuries. This makes deer hunting with a rifle look cute. Oh, wow. They gave me some new headwear and they said, I'm welcome to sit down and eat with them if I like. Oh, oh, oh my God. He's showing me the hands. This is wild. Something like I've never seen before. Oh my God. I feel like I just went to a county fair and I got the worst prize ever. Oh, I want the stuffed monkey. Um, well, it's a real one. Jesus Christ. For those upset by this imagery, it's worth acknowledging that all of our ancestors lived in a way similar to this at some point in history. When you're here, you don't have to imagine how people lived thousands of years ago. You can see it for yourself. Cooking here is survival cooking. It's purely about making the food edible as quickly and efficiently as possible. Though that's not to say that they don't enjoy it. Regarding the animal itself, the vervet monkey is not endangered. In fact, some farmers see these monkeys as farm-destroying pests. The Hidzabe see them the way they see all wild animals, as food. As suspected, they've just charred the entire monkey, kind of burning off its fur completely. Now they're taking off all the limbs. Oh God, he's making me hold the head. So he's eating it right now. He's got the arm. It's unusual because I thought they are going to cook it a lot longer on the fire, but the arm itself, even the hair, they don't try to get it off. They're not scraping it off. It burns, it singes off, and then they just start eating. The organs are roasted near the fire for later consumption. As a reward for a good hunt, a few dogs get a bit of intestine. Just a few steps away, under the shade of a tree, the Hidzabe women are doing their own meal prep. There you go. It looks like they've got a big pot of ugali, just made from corn flour and water. They're probably going to pair that with some more monkey meat, I assume. So now they remove the skin and then they cook it. Half the meat is chopped down to size, and half will be saved for this evening's dinner. I'm uh, 
slightly out of my comfort zone right now. This is a lot more than I expected and, and a lot more than I'm used to seeing right off the bat. I predicted that maybe we'd go on a hunt and we'd build up to a moment like this and instead I have arrived and boom, we're right here eating a monkey. So I'm doing my best to kind of keep it together, document it, and explain to you what I see happening here at the same time. Now I'm gonna go join the guys and see if they are eating the organs or what they're doing now. Back at the hunter's camp, the meat is disappearing fast. Nothing here goes to waste. Any desperate hyenas wandering through the camp tonight will sulk away sorely disappointed. As promised, they've saved some pieces for me. It's still steaming, it's still hot. In a world where every calorie is chased down and hunted, this offering is one of immense generosity that I simply cannot refuse. Let's try it out. That's really tough. That's oh, he's gonna cut, he's shaving off a piece of skin. Maybe you eat, you supposed to chewing, 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 chewing in three minutes and then you start it. Really? Yeah. This is a piece he's given me. I have no idea what part this is and actually I kind of like it that way. Man. Not my favorite. It is a peculiar taste, incomparable to any other kind of protein I've had in my life. It's not all that pleasant. First of all, it's chewy. Kind of a bitter taste to it. It's a little bit earthy and a little bit wormy, for lack of a better word. Part of me hopes that this isn't what human tastes like. I don't want to know what human tastes like. All right, I've officially eaten monkey. There's no going back from that. I think if I lived out here, I'd be the first person in the tribe to become vegan. Up in the woman's camp, the meat is gathered in a pot for boiling. The meat itself is seasoned with only salt. When it's well cooked, lunch can begin. In the meantime, I have some questions. Can I ask you? You're hunting, but why don't you eat goats or cows or stuff like that? This is Chaba, a skilled hunter and smoking enthusiast. They have already eaten. They've eaten goat? Yes. He's regaling us with stories of a goat hunt using Hadzane, the click language unique to the Hadzabe. I love the way this guy speaks. So what is your favorite food? Their favorite is a baboon. It's a traditional for them. If maybe they go to hunting, they hear sound of the baboon. And they, they ambush and they go to hunting. Baboons are the prized kill for hunters here weighing in at 30 to 80 pounds and sporting deadly vampiric fangs. Hunting baboons with bows and arrows is high risk and high reward. Nonetheless, they're allowing me to join tonight's hunt. Scouting starts after lunch. Lunch is served in big cooking pots. Everyone washes their hands, then dives in. She's just handed me a piece. It's boiled. I'm guessing it has to be better than whatever I just had because that was just completely charred meat with hair. I mean, better, better than the roasted one, but uh, yeah, that's tough to get used to. That is something real different. Here, can I stink this rest? Yeah, yeah. No bad. I want to share with you. Okay, cool, cool. Here they have a crap load of ugali and then kind of a broth that's been made from the monkey meat. When I look at how they're doing with the ugali, they make a ball and they put a thumbprint in it like this. That becomes a little ladle and you just dip it right into the broth. Not bad. The broth, it tastes salty and you can taste some of the fat and meat that's kind of uh, boiled out of the monkey itself. Can I ask, what is your name? Our name is Makalitako. Do women hunt here too? Do you ever hunt? Mm. The typical day of a woman here includes gathering edible roots and fruits. Women are also tasked with making bowstrings, building camp, and raising kids. Today, only about 1,300 Hadzabe remain. They live in small nomadic groups of roughly a dozen. The Hadzabe hunters are ready for baboon scouting. 
baboon raids are done at night, ensuring the Hizabe maintain the element of surprise. Right now, we're headed towards tonight's intended target to get a look. They carry their bows because they always carry their bows. They never know when they'll cross paths with their next meal, be it an animal or this. There's a fruit here that they're showing me. I wouldn't suggest eating every berry you come across. Ah. But if these guys say it's okay, well, then it's good enough for me. They want to actually get rid of the skin, so they squeeze out the seed like that, and they throw this part away. So you squeeze the inner seed into your mouth. Throw the skin away. It tastes like beans, like green peas that have not been cooked, quite frankly. That's awesome. These guys just eat and move, eat and move. We've come quite a ways. Uh, I'm out of breath. Uh, everyone else here is actually in shape. It turns out this is a baboon spot. I've been told this is where the baboons will join together. Are the baboons here right now? In the evening, they will come back. So he said it's where the baboons sleep. The olive baboon is the most wide-ranging of all baboons. The species is native to 25 countries throughout Africa. If you look over there, the rock jutting out, it's a lot of different spaces where baboons could hide or sleep at night. Chaba has found proof that baboons were here recently. This is a piece of shit. Fish from baboon, so just eating the fruit. So he said, can join us at night, the place we are now. We can hear when they're coming back in the evening. <laughs> so then after we'll come and attack them. Twice a week, the Hizabe attempt to win a baboon feast. More frequent hunting would chase the troop away forever. To prepare for tonight's raid, these soldiers must stock up on ammunition. Kongoroka is a reliable source for arrows and bows. With enough raw materials in hand, it's time for a quick snack. They just dug into a tree. They saw what they call some stingless bees. There was a funnel going into a tree, chopped it open, and they peeled out this right here. Take a look. This is the purest form of honey you'll find anywhere. Can I try it? Oh, thank you so much. So kind, because this looks delicious. It is still full of tiny little bees. It's waxy, it's sticky. Yeah, buddy. Mm -hmm. Very different reaction than the monkey. It's delicious. It's sweet. It's like honey. I mean, it is honey, but somehow it pops even more. It's so good. This type of honey, you suck it, and what remains here, that is just kind of the wax. Oh, what the? He just took the wax from me, and he put it behind his ear. I think the stuff you put behind the ear, so the stingless can smell it and they hope they can find another. Oh my gosh, that's fascinating. I don't know if it works, but I mean, these guys know a lot about food. I would starve to death out here, but everywhere they look, they see opportunity for something to eat. It's incredible. This is a treasure for the Hizabe people. It's this small stream that runs about a few hundred feet away from the main village. They drink from the stream, they use this water for cooking, they use it for everything. Of course, they aren't gonna do anything to pollute it. They will do their best to keep other people's cattle away from it too, so they're not adding any more impure things into the water. The Hizabe lifestyle is in balance with nature because it must be. When they're thirsty, they drink from the stream. But if they block the stream or hoard water, other animals that depend on that water will move away, leaving the Hizabe with no food. As the sun approaches the horizon and the men head back to camp, the women start preparing dinner. The remaining bits of monkey are chopped and boiled. This time, it's accompanied by a local herb gathered by the women. The herb is picked and washed. In the meantime, the hunters light a fire to aid in their arrow making. They're getting these ready for the hunt tonight. They have a very unique way of doing it. They just got this wood earlier. They put the wood in the fire. They use their mouth to kind of adjust it and straighten it. And then from there, they make a point and they put on a steel tip and a feather tip. It's more complicated than that, but that's the easy version of what they do.
cooking tree. Boiled meat joins fresh herbs. On the side, a new pot of ugali is bubbling. satisfied with their arrow making progress, the guys do what guys have been doing from the beginning of time. Barbecue, using some leftover meat from today's hunt. What you see here is a common cooking method among many African tribes. With nightfall around the corner, another fire is lit in a half-built hut to offer warmth to those inside. This is a temporary shelter made of dry grass over a frame of intertwined branches. Though from what I've gathered, houses are rarely used here, unless seeking shelter from rain. As soon as the sun goes down here, it's pitch black. There's nothing out here except for our own lights that we brought now. These guys have great vision in the night, they hunt in the night, and they do everything else they need to do when it's still dark. Or they have the light of the fire and that's it. Right here they have the skewer from the monkey. Looks like it's about done. Okay, he gave me a macro piece. This is an honor, it's a gift. It's not like they have a refrigerator stocked with food. This is the food. After this, they have to go out and earn more food. So I am not one to deny a gift like this. Second time today, prepared in a slightly different way. This time, more pleasant for sure. Before, the taste was really affected by the burnt hair, the burnt skin. It still has a very unique taste. In some ways, it's chickeny, but then it has like that red hemoglobin that beef does. It's probably not gonna become one of my comfort foods anytime soon, but I'm starting to get it a little bit more. Why they're into it is very different. The fact that it doesn't look like a monkey anymore is helping me out quite a bit. I gotta say, these guys are extremely generous. This food is not easy to come by, and uh, just to even get one bite is uh, quite an honor. Go beer. Thank you. Dinner is ready. Boiled meat, herbs, and ugali. I know I could join them, but I decided to stand back. In the Hidzabe community, everyone contributes to the meal and everyone receives an equal share. It may be a function of kindness or the fact that if you're too greedy here, you won't be around for long. From the sideline, the dogs look on with empty bellies. They need to be hungry for the upcoming hunt. After that, they'll be rewarded. With dinner out of the way, it seems the only task left undone is the baboon hunt. Just as the hunters worry about the dogs growing lethargic, it seems they have fallen into the same trap. Unfortunately, after everybody ate, they didn't have the fire in their belly, maybe because they had too much monkey in their belly. And they went to sleep. Seeing them go to sleep is interesting. They legitimately just sleep outside. They might put a mat or a piece of fabric underneath them, but that is where they're most comfortable sleeping. You might ask, why don't they build better houses or, or build more houses? Well, it's because they're nomadic. Very few people anymore around the world are truly nomadic. I mean, the true reason for any group to be nomadic is because they have to follow their food. And that's exactly what they do here. And so they've just gotten used to living this way over years and years of doing this. So that is the end of this day. They're all tucked in. I'm gonna get tucked in too. And we'll see you in the morning. Oh my God, they've just returned. You look like you've been through hell. So let's see the final result. What is this? Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. Hold on, we just had a donkey go off course. They're supposed to be going this way. They tried to go to this guy's house. Jabba. Jabba. Ekate. Sunny. 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 Everyone always wants to say it that way. <laughs> Sunny. Uh, yeah. What? Have they ever had a foreigner here try the monkey? Uh, yes. Really? Well, they should be arrested. There are a lot of foods I'm willing to try, as you've seen already in this video. Usually my motto is do what the local people do. This is one exception, because I don't want to be walking around being Mr. Poopy Pants for the next two days. We have a lot more to film, a lot more to see, so I think I'm going to stick with the water that we brought here to camp. I mean, these guys have very strong immune systems. They've been living this way their whole lives. So whatever is in here that might bother my gut is going to be just fine for them. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace.